In this video, we're going to talk about probability distributions and graphing probability distributions. When we talk about graphing a probability distribution, I really want to <coughs> distinguish this um, from the graph of a function itself. Um, in, in the graph of a function, we're just looking at values. And we're, in a graph of a probability distribution, we're looking at the probability of getting a specific value when we're talking about a, a random variable. It's a lot closer to frequency distributions, and I'm going to recall the example of a histogram to you. A histogram represents a frequency distribution, but can also sort of show a probability distribution if we change a couple things. So let's say we're looking at a, a frequency distribution, a histogram showing the grades obtained by a class of students. And so we'll say we have D's here and um, B's here. So our, sorry, <laughs> these are going to be D's, these are going to be C's, these are going to be our B's and A's. And a frequency might, distribution might show something like this is, there's 10, I mean, there's three D's, there's 10 C's, there's 15 B's, and there's 12 A's. Okay, so this is our frequency distribution. Um, and, you know, this is, these, these numbers correspond actually over here, 3, 10, 15, and that's going to be 12 right there. For our probability distribution, we wouldn't use the actual numbers that we obtained, we would use the probability. So instead of saying, this is exactly how many students in the class received each one of these grades, let's say we just pulled a, a grade out of the list. What's the probability that it's going to be a D, a C, a B, or an A? Well then, we're still using the frequencies, but we're going to show probabilities instead. So, we're going to do some erasing here. Ooh, that's more, it's a bigger eraser than I wanted. All right, so let's touch this up. If we said, if we said there were three Ds originally, that's going to translate to 7.5%. 7, 7 we had a, let's just actually write this all out. We had three Ds, 10, C's, 15 B's, and 12 A's. That equals 40 total. So to convert these into percentages, we're actually going to, it's going to be, we have to multiply by 10 over, I mean, sorry, 100 over 40. So multiply each of these by 2.5. So this is going to equal 7.5%. This is going to be equal to 25% percent C's. 15 times 2.5 is 37.5 percent B's and 30 percent A's. Now, sanity check, let's make sure this adds up to 100 percent. This plus this is 45 percent plus 25 percent is 70 percent plus 30 percent is 100 percent. So that works. Let's write down these numbers here. A little bit sloppy. Notice that all of this adds up to 1. All these probabilities add up to 1, which is always going to be the case. In a probability distribution, what you have on the vertical axis is probability, and what you have on the horizontal x-axis is values. So you're going to show all the values on the bottom, on the horizontal axis, and the probability associated with each one of those values is going to be on the vertical axis. Also, all when you take the entire area, now this is sort of a funny example because it's a bar graph, normally it's going to be a curve, but when you take the entire area underneath the curve, it's going to, the area is going to be equal to 1 because that's essentially the same thing as saying all the probabilities associated with each value, when you take them all together, they're going to add up to 1, which that just makes sense. That's basic probability for you. So we might have a probability distribution that looks like this. The area, so this, this is our probability over here, and this is our values here. This area here, the area under the curve, is going to be equal to 1 otherwise known as 100%, same thing. You know, we, ha we could have another probability distribution that goes 
into the negatives for values. God, that's sloppy. Let's not do that. I can do better. It might look something like this. Like a, I don't remember if that's a camel or a dromedary. Whichever one has two humps. The, under, the area underneath the curve is still going to be 1. And we're still going to have values here, and this vertical axis is going to display our probabilities. So if this is, if this right here is, is equal to 2, if this is our value for 2, we travel up, and our probability associated with that 2, so we'll say this is something like 15%, is going to be equal, that's going to be whatever it is on the vertical axis. So one is always going to be up here somewhere, up above the highest line in our probability. So that's our probability distributions. I want to examine one special case in this video, and then in subsequent videos we're going to look at another special case. To illustrate, so the this, this special case that we're going to look at is called uniform distribution, and that happens when all of the outcomes are equally likely. So here's a scenario. You are throwing a surprise party for your good friend, Jim. And the surprise party happens at 4 p.m. And Jim is a little bit hard to predict when he, he, he might arrive. Um, you're trying to work it out so that he arrives a little bit after 4 p.m. But the truth is, he might arrive any time between 3.45 and 4.45. And all of those possibilities are equally likely. So all possibilities are equally likely any time between 3.45 and 4.45. Therefore, this is a uniform distribution. And when we're talking about our probability of distribution for his arrival time, it's a uniform distribution because all events are equally likely. So we might graph this out as this is going to be 3.45. That's his earliest possible arrival time. This is 4.45. These are all the possibilities in between, and they're all equally likely. So our probability of any uh, of him arriving at any specific minute we have a whole hour here that he might arrive and all minute arrival times are equally likely so his any the probability of him arriving at any specific minute is 1 over 60 right the probability of him, of him arriving at 357 is 1 out, over 60 because there's 60 possible outcomes and that's just one of them uh, his the probability of him arriving at 441 is going to be 1 over 60 so our probability distribution will look like this. There's just going to be 60 little hash points along the way. And every single one of them has a probability of 1 over 60. You add those all up, it becomes 60 over 60. So our area underneath our, this is not really a curve, it's in a uniform distribution, it's just a line. It's going to be 60 over 60, in other words, 1. That's our probability distribution. And uniform distributions are pretty easy, easy to work with because we can pretty easily determine things. Like say, <clears throat> what's the probability? Let's say we actually get everything in place by 4 p.m. You know, this is a pretty well-organized surprise party. But what's the probability that the whole thing gets ruined anyhow because Jim arrives sometime before 4 p.m.? Well, you know, let's say this is, yeah, that's about right. This is 4 p.m. here. What's our probability of, OK, it probably should have been. It's, scooched a little bit to the left. But the probability of Jim arriving before 4 p.m., well, it's just, you can add up all these probabilities. There's 15 possible outcomes. Each one of them has a probability of 1 over 60. So you add those up. Probability of Jim arriving sometime before 4 p.m. and ruining the surprise is 15 out of 60, also known as 25%. So. That's your look at uniform distribution, a uniform probability distribution. They happen when all outcomes are equally likely. Um, next video, we're going to spend a lot of time looking at the normal distribution. This is what uh, comes up all over the place in statistics and really opens the door for, for us doing a lot of, of interesting things with statistics. So next video, normal distribution.